time again. Our schedule is jam-packed for the next couple of days, too. We've got so many different locations and sets to cover. <sighs> anyway, let's head out and meet up with the others. Everyone, we are looking to wrap with our two main ladies today. I can already smell our success. <laughs> what do you mean, looking to wrap? Oh, aren't you the expert now? This upcoming scene is the two musketeers' final confrontation with the Baron. There will be quite a bit of action, but no choreography beyond what we've already rehearsed. Anyway, get ready! Lights! Camera! Action! The view is beautiful tonight. It reminds me of that fateful night ten years ago. Hmm, and now that I've said it, I can even make out the faint fragrance of herbal tea in the air. Enough, villain! It's time that you pay for the death of our mother! My dear Iris, have you forgotten your manners? How can you speak like this to your own father? <sighs> I'd sooner swallow all of my teeth than call you father! What did I expect? Seems the daughters have turned out to be just as obstinate as their foolish mother! In this world, Mora and status is everything! She thought she could blackmail me using her children and force me to grant her recognition and concessions? Ah, how naive can a woman be? Mother never asked a single thing of you. All she wished was for us to live a peaceful life, just like the others. It was you who personally brewed the poison of prejudice and sent Mother to her death. Compared to that deadly poison, the two bullets that will soon pierce through your heart will be like sweet mercy. <laughs> and that's exactly why I said you're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? So let's see. What is stronger, Mora and power, or the two muskets in your hands? Get them! To leap! There are too many of them! It'll be okay. We'll cover each other, Iris. And Mother will be watching over us, too! Show him your praise! You've lost. <clears throat> to think I'd lose to my own two kids! We are no children of yours. And we'll never call that place our home. <laughs> then tell me... What did you do all this for? You lost your mother, and will soon kill your father as well. What will you gain in the end, other than sentences for your crimes? We will gain our long-awaited justice. <sighs> it's over. Finally, it's over. So, 
Where will you go now, Tulip? I'm not too sure, Iris. Maybe somewhere with lots of flowers? After all, Mother always did love going where the blossoms were. What about you? I... want to go visit Mother's grave. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Huh? Tulip, look! What is it? It's Mother's favorite! The Rainbow Rose! Look! It's blooming again! Excellent! That was beyond mesmerizing! <laughs> Even I didn't expect the scene to go so well. And we got it in a single take! <laughs> All right, everyone. We've got a wrap for Tulip and Iris. Congratulations, Ayaka and Chevrois. Thank you. I didn't expect our parts to wrap so quickly. I wish I could savor the experience for just a bit longer. Ho <laughs> Paimon totally understands. Paimon's not ready to say goodbye to the clapperboard either. Filming has really been a lot of fun. You were great too, Chevrois. The way you said, long-awaited justice, it gave Paimon chills! That is indeed my favorite line in the whole book. I still remember trying to act it out in my room the first few times I read it. Whoa, Paimon would have never guessed you're that type. Who doesn't like stories where the guilty are punished and justice prevails over evil? Don't forget, I'm the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Captain, I have something urgent to report. Please excuse me, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. It's okay, don't worry about us! Oh? Was she whisked away by work already? Mm, I was just about to tell her how great she did. It seemed like some urgent official business. <sighs> then perhaps we should thank the stars that we were able to wrap both of your parts so quickly today. Switching around the filming schedule would have been a real pain. Anyway, I actually came over to let everyone know that we're all done for today. You can go home and get some rest. And one last thing, Miss Ayaka. Your acting skills today were immaculate as always. Are you sure you won't consider taking up full-time acting? See, I just happen to know this great troupe that's still looking for a lead actress. Thank you for your kind words, Director Farina. Unfortunately, there are still many matters that I have to take care of back home at the Yashiro Commission. I cannot remain in Fontaine to pursue an acting career. Nevertheless, I will make sure to treasure this incredible opportunity in my heart. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. Just let me know if you ever change your mind. I believe it's also about time for me to take my leave. But hopefully I'll see you on set over the next few days. Even though my part's wrapped, I'd still like to swing by and help out the crew. See you tomorrow, Traveler and Paimon. Yep, see you tomorrow! Well, what should we do next? Maybe we'll go investigate the case some more with Shivers today. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. You could say that our ship has finally chanced upon one of those small, remote islands of intel. Affirmative. 
It wasn't anything conclusive, but it should show us a clear way forward. Have you ever heard of someone by the name of Emily? Oh, you mean that famous perfumer? She's a good friend of mine. She's lent me her aid several times in the past to resolve some difficult cases. After I discovered the rainbow rose at the scene of the murder, I sent it to her. After all, she's probably the foremost expert on flowers and scents in all of Fontaine. And then? There was nothing remarkable about the flower or the trace amounts of soil left on it. But according to Emily, the rainbow rose left by the killer was derived from a very rare cultivar. Huh. Paimon didn't know that there were different varieties of rainbow rose. Paimon just thought they grew everywhere in the wild. Flowers that are deliberately cultivated will always show some different features from those that bloom in the wild. We already knew that the rose left at the scene belonged to a special cultivar, but with Emily's expertise, we were able to pinpoint the place where it was first picked from. Oh, Paimon gets it now! So whoever first planted that rainbow rose was probably the killer! Precisely. And after we checked what we learned against some sales records from the past, we discovered that there's only one person in all of Fontaine who could grow and sell this specific cultivar. Uh, really? And who is it? It's the novelist. But didn't you say he had an alibi? To be clear, I haven't changed my mind about him. I still don't think he was the one who pulled the trigger. However, that doesn't mean the true culprit never visited him at his home or never purchased a rainbow rose from his garden. Whatever the case, we will have to confirm a number of things with him. So you mean the next place we need to go is... Yes, we're going to pay him a visit at his home. That should be his house. There are so many Gardamex stationed around the place. Uh, that's pretty unusual, right? According to what he told me last time we spoke, he hired them so he won't be harassed or disturbed. Huh. So there are a lot of flowers in his garden, but... Paimon doesn't think we'll be able to pick one without alerting the Gardamex. Right. Which is exactly why I think there has to be a special connection between him and the killer. So, should we knock? Just wait here for now. I'd like to take care of a number of those Gardamex first. But they're so far away. How are you planning to do that? Don't forget, Paimon. I'm actually the real-life captain of the Musketeers. All clear. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait! Paimon's a little nervous now that we know he could be the killer. <laughs> Can we go over our plan of action again? I'll go knock on the door and make sure it's safe inside. Once we're sure that we're in the clear, I'll ask him to come with us for a quick round of questioning at the guard's headquarters. But can't we just arrest him? We still have no evidence that he's the killer, or that he lent the killer any direct aid. Still, it would be appreciated if you could pick a rainbow rose from his garden for me while I'm talking to him. It'll help the Mara Chose Phantom confirm Emily's theory. Sure, no problem. Just be careful, Chevras.
Excuse me. Mr. Baptiste, are you home? Who could it be at this hour? Oh, it's you, Officer Chevras. Would you mind accompanying me to the guard's headquarters, Mr. Baptiste? We would like to ask you some questions about a case. Oh, is it still regarding the murder case from before? I cannot confirm or deny that at this time. So it is then. Listen, I need you to come with me, Mr. Baptiste. Uh, Miss Chavras, I'll save you the trouble. Oh, and you two over there? There's no need for you to pick my flowers either. It's not time for them to bloom yet. By saving me the trouble, you mean? I will confess, I was the killer. Huh? He... he just admitted he's guilty! Please relax, everyone. I'm not armed. The musket you're looking for has been buried in my backyard. Then it's my responsibility to inform you, Mr. Baptiste, that everything you say right now will be used as evidence for the inevitable trial. Yes, I am perfectly aware of that. I must say, I hate this feeling. Oh? Is it because I confessed, or because you've been proven wrong? Both, I suppose. For the same reason as the one I wrote out in my novel, of course. I did it to exact revenge. Hmm. I know you haven't figured out the link between the two of us, had you done so, I'd have been taken away to the headquarters a long time ago. But that won't stop me from always remembering his grotesque face. After all, he was the one who killed my mother. Your mother is still healthy and well. You know, I was adopted as a child. I was referring to my birth mother. That was never recorded in the orphanage's records. Please forgive a six-year-old child for concocting some lies to protect himself after watching his mother die right in front of him. So, your novel, it was like a record of your life? No, of course not. It was a work of fiction with many embellished parts. But, I am indeed the illegitimate son of a wealthy and influential man who abused his power to murder my mother. That part was a hundred percent real. But the man you killed didn't have a mora to his name. He was a hired assassin. An irredeemable beast who sank his fangs into a defenseless woman just for a few bags of mora. But if that's really the truth, you wouldn't be telling us any of this now. You still haven't managed to take revenge against your father, the true mastermind behind it all. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear that kind of thing from the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I'm simply skeptical about your motives. It's simple, really. I've grown tired of everything and don't want to shoulder this burden anymore. You may have considered me too soft to pull the trigger. Well, as it turns out, you are exactly right. I've become overwhelmed by the aftermath of the murder. So you're going to call a stop to your revenge, just like that? The true mastermind is too rich and too powerful for me. I've accepted that I will never be able to avenge my mother alone. And so what? The characters in your book never gave up? Now, Officer Chavras, I'm the one who has killed a man, aren't I? Are you trying to convince me to commit another crime? What's your father's name? How do you plan to prove the veracity of all of your claims? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to speak with you privately. Sure. Why don't we speak privately at the guard's headquarters? No, it has to be here. I must ensure that we won't be overheard. <sighs> Fine. Let's talk here. When I said won't be overheard, I meant by anyone. I would like to speak with you and you alone. Thanks. I appreciate it. Please stay safe, Chevres. All right. Let's hear it. 
Will you really believe what I'm about to say? Well, that depends on what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Then listen closely. Hmm. So that's how it's all connected. So, it seems you believe me after all. Do you want me to go public with this? No, of course not. At least, not right now. Then why did you bother telling me? You've read my work. What do you think? <sighs> Even if you were to go public with all of this right now, he'd simply deny everything. It's been too long. Almost 20 years. Anything that could be used as evidence has long faded away. Even if there might have been a solitary island of truth once upon a time, it has long sunk beneath the waves by now. Justice will never find him. Not if you don't try. I know that as the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, you will always stand on the side of justice. But do you really think a cushy life in prison really constitutes justice for him? I bet he could lead an extremely comfortable life in the Fortress of Meripede. What are you trying to say? I've been observing you from a distance. Your portrayal of the Musketeer was exquisite. Pull the trigger of justice against him. Let the villain get what he deserves. You want me to let you go so you may complete your revenge? No, Officer Chavras. I know that would be impossible. No. What I'd like is for you to perform the deed on my behalf. Oh, Shavra sure is taking her time. What could they be talking about anyway? Oh, Paimon's worried. What if he decided to attack her? Oh, uh, you do have a point. Still, do you have any idea who the rich person might be? And why the novelist doesn't want us to hear what he's saying to Chevras? Sorry to keep you waiting, you two. Hey, how did your talk go? I've already sent someone to escort Baptiste back to the headquarters for questioning. He wasn't lying about the musket. It was indeed buried in his backyard. Did he tell you the name of the rich guy? Yes, he did. But for now, I have to return to the special patrol. There are still a few loose ends I need to tie up. I'll probably be quite busy over the next few days, so apologies if you don't see me on set. All right, Paimon understands if you can't tell us everything you know. We'll just keep an eye on the Steambird then. Actually... There's still something else I need your help with. <laughs>